Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I would like to introduce you to Chloe. This is the um, most recent coloring page in my Etsy shop. And this is the light grayscale with background printed on my uh, Nina Desert Storm cardstock. So, um, if you um, have gone over to my Etsy shop recently, you will notice that I am now offering, um, with each um, purchase of a page, you get two PDFs. Um, one has um, a background, one is light, medium, dark, and sepia with the background like this, and one is um, the same for choices, but there will be no background. So it will give you guys a little bit more um, freedom to choose which version you prefer and, um, and, and do what works best for you. So, um, we're going to start on her skin. Um, you can see that my printer is being difficult again and giving me a few, um, little lines here in the darkest parts, but, um, truly we will be able to, to cover those all up just fine with no problem. You won't even be able to see them after we're finished. So I'm not gonna stress about it too much. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? Um, you may be hearing some rain and thunder in the background. Um, we are having a lovely and rare daytime, cloudy, rainy day today, which is lovely. Um, it still gets pretty hot here. I'm actually in, um, filming this in uh, mid-October, and we still get up into the 90s um, easily. So right now it's only about 73, and it's cloudy and rainy, and it's just joyous. I have my window open and my, um, yeah, the window's open in the house, and it's just fabulous. So only people from Sunbelt states can understand how glorious um, rainy days are. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start with chestnut, and let's see. Maybe I'll move. I'll move her up just a, a wee little bit. All righty, and away we go. I just love the sound of rain. There's, <laughs> there's, and the smell, the smell of rain is glorious. I think we always want what we don't have, you know, people from, from places that have rain all the time. And, uh, you know, they, they long for dry. <laughs> um, I, on the other hand, love the rain. I think when I was younger, I probably wouldn't enjoy living in a really rainy climate because, you know, you're worried about your hair and stuff like that. But man, right now, especially after a long, hot summer, I can't, I, I would just love to live someplace where there was, I mean, I don't need rain all the time, but, you know, where it gets a little bit rainy so that I can have green <laughs> instead of brown. That would be really nice. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit darker bit right here, which is not on the coloring page. The rain has slowed down now, so it's not too loud anymore. But before I started uh, filming, it was really coming down hard. Which is really, really good for our trees.
I want to give her a nice big chubby cheek smile. really looking forward to wearing <laughs> real clothes again um, instead of the summer my summer uh, go-to which is you know soft stretchy clothing and things that can breathe and you know it gets pretty hot here, so you do, I don't want like jeans. I don't. I don't even jeans. Don't even touch my body in the summertime. <laughs> this is the time of year that we're very grateful for here. This is our outdoor time. This is this is the best time of year. We get about six months of awesome weather and six months of hell. <laughs> so um, it's, it's finally time for us to have nice, nice temps. So I'm going to try and take my time on this one. I know that sometimes I tend to rush a little bit, um, worrying about time and stuff like that. But, but honestly, I, uh, I work more slowly when I'm not on camera. And I would imagine that a lot of you probably work more slowly as well. So... There's really no point in me rushing. Um, I'm starting to feel like, you know what? The time is going to be what the time is going to be. And, and I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I worry too much. Too much about this kind of stuff. I don't really, I don't really worry about anything else. Which is kind of dumb because, you know, this is nothing to worry about. Um, so I'm going to try and stop worrying here too. Just do what I do and not worry. No more worrying. So if you're if you've printed the um, one of the darker versions, you will probably be able to see a lot of this stuff a lot easier. The, um, the light version on the tan paper um, always seems to lose a little bit of the definition of things.
always really, really use super light pressure if you can. I'm going to um, pull out my white <clears throat> because there are certain areas here that I want to make sure I keep I keep um, a bright highlight on right there in the corner of the eye. That's one place that I want to keep um, bright. The top of her nose here. Um, for now, that's, that's probably good enough. I can always add white, thankfully, when I'm working on, um, this tan paper, but those two things I think I want especially bright. So... And I want to try and go lighter on this side of her nose, even though we still do need some shading. Um, and the darkest side of her nose on this side. So I'm barely touching the paper with my, with the tip of my pencil. And let's go ahead and darken this now so that we to be a little bit darker. She looks a little scary right now. A little scary. Okay, let's get some shading underneath her lip. There's always that ugly phase you go through before you can get to the pretty stuff. Kind of like real people. <laughs> There's always that ugly phase before. I've been... I hardly ever put makeup on anymore. COVID was really bad for, for me in that respect because I got used to not putting on makeup and then it was like when it was time to start doing it again, I was like, why? why? My face got used to not having that stuff all over it. So, Sometimes I feel like my ugly face is lasting a lot longer than <laughs> it should. Let's just say getting older sucks. I'm sure some of you can relate to that. It's like you look in the mirror and you go, who the heck is that person? I don't even know who that is. I'm trying not to be bothered by it. That's my mantra. Don't worry. Be happy. <sighs> okay. All right. 
I'm going to go ahead and use this chestnut kind of as cheek color and shadow in one. I'm just going to darken up this area that's going to be, um, you know, that's got the leaf blocking the light. I'm going to get that a little bit darker. ahead and darken just going real lightly just kind of tinting the paper almost all right let's put some we've got shading in here Dark comes all the way underneath her chin. Her neck is quite a bit darker than her face. So I'm going to go ahead and let this come out quite a bit. So, um, let's get my, let me get my pencil out here. So this right here is the top of her sweatshirt or sweater. It's kind of like a fleece sweatshirt. So I don't want to put any um, skin tone on that. Um, if you can't see stuff, pull your pencil out and real lightly make your marks um, where things are supposed to go. And it will make things so much easier for you when the time comes for you to start coloring. Because there's nothing more frustrating than coloring along and then realizing that you've colored over something that you didn't want to. And especially if you have multiple layers down, that makes it really, <clears throat> really hard to cover over. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of leave that area a little bit lighter because we're gonna, some light is gonna hit the center of her neck there. And this will actually all get um, dark brown underneath in here so all right let's do some stuff on her on her hands um, this is all pretty light so I'm just gonna very lightly tap in her fingernail and I think that's all I need to do let's put some Shading here on her finger. She'll have some This is the shading that goes under the knuckle. Never mind frame. Yes, I am. That's good. And then this.
right. Um, just do a little bit of. All right, let's. Um, I guess we'll go to peach. For the, the peach, in this case, I'm going to use to blend and transition the dark chestnut into everything else. So I'm going to go over the chestnut and blend it into the face a little bit more. And I'm gonna take a second and put the auto, put the lock on the, I forget to do that sometimes and then I look back on the video and you can see my hand perfectly in in um, <laughs> in focus but the page is not so now hopefully we won't have to worry about that try and keep that area right there and the top the tops of her cheeks as bright as I can I know I keep trying to find a way, a way to put my hand so that I'm not um, Blocking the light for you. this part for the light peach. I really want to <clears throat> try and use the different lights and darks to really contour her face since she's got such a um, strong shape to her face. This part of her upper lip is going to be um, a bit darker, and then we're going to leave this half of her lip to go a little bit lighter. I'm trying to show where those that light is catching.
birds. The birds are ch chirping, all of them. It's like every bird outside is all singing <laughs> in relief. <laughs> uh, we don't, I mean, we have birds and we hear them in the mornings, um, especially. Uh, but by the afternoon in the summertime, they are just quiet, um, most of them, because they're... <laughs> They're all just chilling, trying to stay cool. So it's nice to hear them all. <clears throat> we have um, peach-faced lovebirds that are wild here in town. And I don't know where they came from. I don't know if they started out as a um, somebody's pet <laughs> and and just have you know or pets and have just bred I don't know I don't, I don't know where they came from but they're beautiful they're like what you would um, you know see in the tropics they're um, well they're peach faced lovebirds and they um, they fly in flocks and um, a couple years ago, I started putting um, bird seed out for them in a bird feeder because I had seen um, another house do it, and the the uh, bird feeder, this bird feeder, was in the front yard, um, and there were peach face lovebirds everywhere, all over this feeder. So I decided that I wanted to do that. So I went and bought some bird seed, and I got a feeder. And um, for, I don't know, probably a couple of months, I really, really enjoyed having them come. It took them a while to find it um, and, get, and get used to knowing that it was there. But once they knew that it was there, I would have peach-faced lovebirds coming into the backyard. There was only one problem. <laughs> um, we also have... Um, Doves, um, common doves, I, to me they look like pigeons. Um, we do have pigeons too, but these are just some kind of common dove. And they're bullies. And they are um, gluttons. <laughs> and they would um, come and sit on the feeder and scare away the peach face lovebirds and um, eat all of their seed um, and those little buggers were just eating me out of house and home it was costing me um, like like well over probably t 10 to 20 dollars a week in f in seed um, and I just finally said, well, this is just ridiculous. I can't, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so unfortunately, I had to stop feeding the peach face lovebirds. But we tried all kinds of things to try and keep the doves out. And we just couldn't, there, we just couldn't get it to work. Um, so that was a bummer. I did enjoy that time. All right, so I'm looking at this finger. There's just something about the shape of this finger that's bugging me. It's probably in my original drawing, so I apologize. But I'm going to try and just thin that finger out just a little bit. And I can do that by shading the thumb. That looks better already. Just that simple little... Um, change so all right um, let's do a little bit more white just right here all right I think we're ready for light peach um, I want to make sure before I do that, before I put the light peach on, I really want to make sure that I have enough of a shadow underneath her hat. 
I really want to make that hat look like it's, you know, sitting on her head and casting this nice deep And we'll probably have to add some other stuff to that too. All right, so light, um, yeah, that's light peach. So your light peach on, if you're using white paper, is gonna show up a lot darker then it shows up on this tan paper. Even though I am going to put white here, um, I'm going to put a light layer of this light peach on top of the cheek. The white will, will still really show up strongly on top of this, but it seems like it the white blends better if I have a layer of something underneath it. All right, so this gets the light peach. And keep my pressure even. Right now her face is looking really, really pink. And that's because of the light peach, um, at least on this paper. But we're gonna tone that down with some yellows and oranges. Do some nectar.
Copperheads. Do white. bathing on just do a little bit right there okay more layers lots lots more layers if I'm ready for eggshell yet or not though. I think it needs some more what do I want? Um okay I don't know if this is what I want or not. Um if I ever am using the luminance um, pencils and um, I tell you to pull out your warm earth, this beige sienna is, the, is uh, a good Prismacolor alternative. It's not perfect, um, but it's not bad. To get her chin a little bit darker underneath. darker up in here. Let's do that some more. I think in here. heavy right there. I'm just going to take my light peach and soften that a little bit. All right, let's come in here. And I 
think even a little bit darker in here. It's all just slowly building up. Sometimes I get it right the first time and sometimes it takes really working it to get it the way I want it. more in here. It's half bright and half dark outside. You can see, you can see extremely bright sunlight and extremely dark shadows. The sky is dark, but the sun is peeking through and making everything very high contrast out there right now. These lines that I'm putting in right here, those are like those um, creases that we get in the neck. I'm debating, <laughs> I'm thinking of whether I want to add the eggshell yet. Let's add a little eggshell, okay, that's fine. It couldn't hurt and it's one more layer of pencil that we have down for when the time comes to start blending. Sometimes I use beige for this sometimes eggshell or one of my other brands of pencils I uh, that's one thing I never know what to do about because if I was if I was coloring the way I would do it when I wasn't on camera I'd be pulling out several brands of pencils and using them but I hate to do that when I'm doing the videos because I don't know what pencils different people have and I hate to exclude somebody from coloring along if that's what they want to do if they don't have the pencils that I'm using. try and stay away from this right here because actually I really want that to be dark and if I put I don't want to put light on top of it and then struggle to get it dark again so I'm going to leave that and just we'll just add some more of something else on top here um, 
one of the pencils that I haven't been using, but I really want to, I really want to bring in, um, is that Holbein cork. It, um, it's the, it's such an awesome, it's just such an awesome pencil for portraits, for blending and, um, all that stuff. So I might just start bringing that in and um, maybe you guys can order an open stock one if you don't have Holbein's. Kind of like uh, how everybody was going out and buying the, the uh, buff titanium Karen Dash to use as a blender for a while there. This was a couple years back where everybody was saying, oh my gosh, the best blender in the world is Buff Titanium Karen Dash. And it, it, it's a great, great color. It's a great soft, yellowy, really nice color. I totally agree. Um, but a lot of people were buying it just the single open stock pencils because they didn't um, didn't want to spend the money on a full set of, of luminance. Well, that's kind of how I feel about the um, Holbein cork. It's like just buy one pencil, get that one, especially if you are, um, if portraits are your main subject matter for coloring and art and stuff. It's just a great All right, we're getting there slowly. There's certain areas that I just don't want to add this light color on. And I can tell I need more. Um, more pigment so let's let's figure out one to use then um <laughs> yeah um in this case i would really like to pull out my luminance warm earth um so i'm going to um, if you don't have the, um, the Luminance Warm Earth Dark Flesh, they changed their names, but 741, 745. If you don't have those, then I would say just use the um, Beige Sienna. Use the Beige Sienna if you don't have it. But I will say that they really are quite different. Um, I mean, it's close enough if that's all you have, but I'm telling you, you got to go out and get some of these pencils if you're going to do portraits. They're worth it. Which one is this? This is the 40. Oh, that's just, just so much better. I can just see oh, I'm already happier.
do a little bit of I'm thinking that this should have been still a little bit lighter I don't know if that was the right color though hang in there with me we'll get it maybe even maybe maybe this Sometimes it takes trial and error. Okay, this is 5%. This isn't a science. There's no perfect formula. It's just kind of, at least for me, I just have to work it until I get it looking the way I want it to. The way I want it to look. That's a little bit better. Okay. Um, let's do some black grape. Try and really shade the side of the face, but not not bring it in very far. That's tricky. I think that's I think that's gonna be okay. And just bear with me. I'm gonna take my espresso and just. This is going to be where, you know, the, obviously the hair is. Sometimes I need to see the shapes of things and that, <clears throat> that helped me see that shape a little bit better. All right, black grape down in here. Definitely want to stick with purples, um, even blues, red, browns, things like that for your shadows um, on skin, never black. We're, we're getting somewhere gradually. I think more chestnut in here. More color, I think a little bit more color. Too crazy there. I think we'll bring back the chestnut. Get some shading underneath her nose in here. She doesn't really have a hugely defined Cupid's bow. Not as much as some of the other pages.
think I'm gonna bring my black in and get those nostrils defined a little bit. If I can find it. It's, it's hard, even for me. Um, I, I don't mean like it, that didn't come out sounding right. <laughs> um, it's hard for many of us, including myself, um, to get dark enough at times on a page, on the skin. Um, it's scary. It's scary to go really, really dark. Um, but I've never, I don't, I, I'm, I'm getting to the point now where I filmed so many of these, <laughs> I can't remember what I've, what I've said and what I haven't said. So if I'm repeating myself, just bear with me, but I've never been sorry that I went to dark, that I went dark. I've never but I've all, but I've often thought to myself, darn, I wish I would have gone darker. Um, so try, <laughs> try and push yourself a little further every time you color a page. not always easy. We get into those comfort zones. I'm very guilty of it myself. All right, I need to do some black grape underneath our hat. Maybe a little bit more shading underneath. color down and I think okay that's good that's enough and then I keep going and then I look and I go what well, wait a minute where's all the color I put down <laughs> it's because I keep doing light over the dark all right I'm gonna do a few lines on the knuckles here. And a little darkness
I still feel like I don't have enough pigment down here on her skin. Because when I go to start to blend, especially if I use a light color, which I kind of wanted to do, I feel like I'm going to just remove all of the color that I put on here. So I'm going to deepen her cheeks a little bit. And I didn't think I was going to use pink, but I think I'm changing my mind. So let's put a little bit of pink starting to feel like we're getting closer to where we need to be. You know, it's cold, so her her cheeks and her nose, I think, would have a little bit of pink. Um, oh, let's do some pink on her fingers. to break out the white and do a little bit of blending carefully. I think she needs more color first underneath her eyes. Oh, you know what I want to do before I do white? Let's do some grayed lavender before the white. That's another magic color. For shadows and I guess mostly for shadows, but it just... always seems to make a really nice difference when I add it. Easier for you to see what I'm doing. And then the <coughs> the um burnt ochre that we're going to put on here is going to work really nicely with these purple tones. It's going to tone down the purple, but it's still going to let that purple do what it's supposed to.
right. Wait. Gently at first, don't apply a lot of pressure. Feel out the page and adjust as you go. It should be really smooth. Um, feel really smooth because if we if you have enough pigment down on the on the um, paper. But there's certain areas where I'm going to use a lighter pressure. And certain areas where I'm going to make my pressure a little bit heavier. So I'm doing light pressure now. I'm just kind of blending and adding pigment. Uh, adding, uh, yeah, I guess pigment, you know, I, I don't want to say wax, I'm, I'm just, but I want, you know, more layers, more layers of the pencil down. A little bit here, light pressure, don't want bright white, just want to brighten a little bit here. Okay, it's hard for me to tell yet if I have enough pencil down on her hand. I look at it and think that I do not, but I'll know better in a little bit. I'm going to do my first blend with the Colorless Blender, which is hiding on my table somewhere. Okay, make sure that it's clean. Make sure you haven't used it on, um, you know, something green <laughs> beforehand. And you should be able to feel with this one too. Like if it's scratchy, if it's not smooth when you go to swirl these these colors around, you, you don't have enough pigment on your paper. I read a few a few people complaining on um in one of my groups about how disappointed they were with the Splendor. They'd heard so many good things about it and they went to use it and it didn't do anything and it, it just sounded scratchy. And um, in reading the comments, I learned that this um, person had thought that they could put down like one layer of colored pencil and use the Splendor and it would, and it would magically blend and smooth their their pencil and it doesn't work like that there has to be pigment on the paper to to maneuver to move around and
get in there. Something here is not right yet. Um, This is my chestnut, by the way, in case you couldn't tell. Okay, it looks really weird because of her, her lips and her teeth. I think she just does not look finished yet, but I, I think she'll look better once I get her, her mouth done. Let's add some gray lavender under her eyes. All right, it's burnt poker time, I think. Very lightly. I'm going to glaze this color on. Let's do a little bit of something on her hands here. don't mind this color being very, very warm because her sweater is going to be very, very warm and the background is going to be very, very warm. So I think that it would, it would make sense um, to have some of that warm light coming in on her skin. All right, 
let me show you my, I think I've showed you this in a previous video, but I'm going to show you again. One of my favorite new um, tools for blending. And the, especially when you have a lot of pigment on your paper, that's when it works the best. But what I like about it is that it doesn't add any more, um, uh, you know, wax or oil or, or, or whatever. It doesn't add any, any of that to the paper, to the page. It just takes what's on there and really smooths it all out very, very, very nicely. Still, I'm not sure that I have enough color on her hand. I might have to sit with this for a day and decide. Let's um, put her fingernail on and then we're gonna do her lips and her teeth. I think I don't want as bright of a pink as the regular pink, so I think I'm going to use deco pink. Yeah, that works. I want it to be light. Um, and then I'm going to take her finger is not, her thumb is not shaped right. That's what doesn't look right to me. What did I do? If it's on the original, I apologize. I'm going to just see if I can lift. That thumb up a little bit. You know, this, I don't know. It just felt too flat. Felt like it should have a... Yeah, I don't know. Having... difficulties. <laughs> um, somewhere around here I have my, my skinny little eraser. This will work. I want to get rid of that, that little bit of white. Yeah, I didn't fix it very well. We're going to, we're, I think we're just going to leave it. Um, because really it should it should go up and it's not. I, I failed to do that. Okay, let's not worry about it. Let's, I wanna get these lips and teeth done cause they're, they're kind of making me crazy a little bit. Um, and I gotta add a little bit of color right underneath here cause it's missing. A little bit better. Okay, so teeth. Um, I think we're going to start with French gray, 10%. I'm gonna put the color in in kind of in stripes because teeth tend to 
kind of have a little bit of ridges. So in my head, <laughs> if I do them this way, they'll look more natural. I don't know if that's true or not. All right, and then I'm gonna do some cool gray 50%. the outer ones. Let's get some there's gum. Come on Karen, don't mess this up. I know it looks really weird right now. I'm going to take something a little bit darker. I don't think I want, I think I want henna. But at the moment, I can't find it. Here it is. All right, let's just do... All right, let's let's get the lips done and then I'll I'll feel, I'll feel better. Right now she just looks really weird. All right. Nectar, which is the usual color that I do for the first layer on my lips. better already just having the lips not be brown all right I'm gonna take this nectar and I'm gonna bring it down and um, just to add a little bit of color there I, I still want under the directly under the lip to be a little bit lighter but I think that looks that looks better all right, um, I've got henna, I've got mahogany red, and I even have a little bit of pink. So let's start with henna. Sorry if I'm blocking the light, I have to come in from a different angle here.
Let's put a little bit of pink on here and see what that does. red your darkest colors are usually right in the corners of the mouth and on the underside of the lip This is a hard one. I chose, to, I chose to do a hard one. She was hard the first time I did her too. Okay, let's do some black. Let's get some black in this corner. Sometimes I feel like I can do black on the lips if I just glaze that color in the corners. I don't want to go crazy. You don't want her to have black lips. So be super duper careful when you if you do this. Use the lightest possible touch. She needs uh, more shading underneath her lip here. Um, I'm going to use the, the luminance. It felt weird. This. And by f it felt weird, I meant it felt the pigment going on felt weird. But this is blending it out okay. like I'm almost there but not quite it's like something's not right but I can't identify what it is I'm afraid if I use mahogany red it's gonna get too red too pink I guess pink is a better word nope that's helping Sometimes you just don't know until you try. Okay, that 
is better. Getting some some a little bit more darkness on the underside of the lip over here. I'm good with that. I think we're gonna stop there for the for the um for the lips. Although we probably need a little bit of a shadow. I told you I was gonna take my time on this one. <laughs> So we are running over an hour and a half, but I, I just, uh, yeah, it's okay. So right. I honestly don't know if I should do a cold gray or a French gray for the, I'm going to try this French gray 50%. Because we need a little bit of a shadow on the teeth. And actually, let's try. This is uh, henna. I just want a little bit of a darker line. And what that gray did was it kind of covered up our... I think I need a darker line between the teeth. Very, very lightly. I don't, I don't know. Let's see. I almost want to shorten some of these. Yes, it's very scary to do something after you've worked so hard. a little bit darker on the outer. So I'm going to stop there on the teeth and let it, I'm going to marinate with that for a little while. Okay, let's do the eyes. <laughs> let's move on. Getting down to the point where I'm gonna have to hand sharpen some of these. Okay, so let's do cool gray. 10% getting ready to do another eye worksheet. I've got a new one, so we'll do a We'll color one of those eyes from the new worksheet that's going to be coming out soon. The first one was a huge success, so thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. So much so that maybe want to do another one. So, I've got another one coming out. And I will say, I really like doing the eyes when they're nice and big. And they're small. They're so much harder. All right, 
kind of, mm, what do I want to do? I want to blend with the 10% cool gray. Just soften that a little bit. Soften that a little bit. All right, let's put some nectar. All right, wait, let's do a little dab of white. So a little. Purpley pinks are not dark enough, so let's do let's do mahogany red. what would happen if I pulled some clay rose instead of nectar. All right, I'm going to use light peach for the waterline. That little light bit right there is actually the underside of her eyelid. So I'm going to use the clay rose there. It's a little bit darker. Yep, I like that. I'm going to do that over here. And then the light peach. I'm going to use jade green. Mm, I want to put a little bit of, I need to sharpen this, but we're, I'm running out of, there we go. All right, let's go ahead and put the highlight. I'm going to put just a tiny little bit of white with little slashy lines. Then jade green. And then kelp green. Think dark gray. Let's try. Um, let's 
70% cool gray. bit underneath the eye line, the um, lash line, the eyelid. Okay, I'm not happy yet. So black. Just, just barely. this up. I'm going to darken this corner of her eye with the black. I don't know. Something's long. Something looks... Something's not right. Okay. I'm going to bring her funky. I hate it when that happens. Why does her eye look funky? All right, I'm just going to keep going for a little bit. It might just be nothing. So I'm going to put some nectar. Be that little pink dot right there. Something's not right. Her eye is pointing down too far for one thing. Her, her, the corner looked weird, so we'll take care of that. Is it that the pupil is in the wrong spot? <sighs> okay, I can't. Oh, there it is. It's possible that the pupil is too close to the corner. should be dark, but I don't know if it's too dark. Okay, let's try this again. Let's move that pupil over a little bit. I think that's better. All right, let's do eyelashes. Sometimes eyelashes make a difference. There's still something that just isn't right. camera roll because um, this has now gone into a salvage this picture and don't screw it up <laughs> and normally you know my it, my gut is to say oh turn the camera off and and work on this and fix it but I'm just gonna let you guys watch what I what I would do if I was not on the camera and so this 
So there you go. I'm just going to try and salvage this. Is this just something that's not right? And now I'm getting, I keep, I'm getting, um, what's the word? Not frustrated, but don't go crazy and make marks on your page that don't belong there because you're not being careful. Like I just did. This is my dark gray, my 70% cool gray. All right, it's starting to feel a little bit better. Let's get some eyelashes on here. Sometimes it's better to take a break and walk away and come back because you don't see things properly when you start to get um, frustrated, when you start to get, uh, you know, when something goes wrong and you're like, that's not right. My my instinct, I lost my 10% cool gray, so I'm just going to use white. My instinct is to um, keep working it until I fix it. Like, I have a really hard time going to bed at night when there's something not right. Um, no matter what it is, no matter what we're talking about. If I have a problem that's not been solved, um, I have a really hard time going to bed. I have to solve it before I go to bed. Um, this is kind of the same thing. What I really should do is stop. <laughs> um, because mistakes get made when you are frustrated or too close to something. Like, I feel like I just messed up her lashes. Okay, I'm going to take espresso. I'm going to soft, I'm going to use that under her eye to soften that lash line. That's, that's not bad. Um, I am also going to use, because eyebrows bug me if they're not the right color after I've done the eyes. So, her hair is going to be a dark blonde, so I don't want to go too dark on her eyebrows, but I do want them to be you know, darker. So I'm going to put light umber down. First. And then I'm going to use espresso. Just almost at the bottom edge Okay 
All right, so there's some things here that I can see that I need to work on. I want, I want some more shadow underneath her eyes. And it may take me a little while to get there. Um, use beige sienna if you don't have the Caran d'Ache color. We're almost at two hours. I really need to stop at two hours. Um, okay, so got a little bit more. It's a little bit better. It's not quite enough, but it's a little bit better. All right, how do I feel about her teeth? Um, I'm going to put some highlights on her teeth, some lighter bits, so they're not just <clears throat> I want to put a little bit bigger of a gap there. That's a little bit better. Okay, um, I kind of feel like this is still not dark enough. This, this crease here is still not dark enough. Chestnut. Chestnut to the rescue. Um, I could really still keep working on this for probably another at least half an hour. It's mostly going to be deepening up some of these places where, again, I did not go dark enough. Sometimes stuff just falls into place, and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> All right. Well, I hate to leave you. I guess I could leave and, and come back and work on it some more on the next video. What is this that I have in my hand here? This is nectar. Do I want nectar? Let's try nectar. That's, that's not bad. See what I mean about not being able to stop until I get things right? just keep going. And then we'd have a three hour video for skin. <sighs> All right, well, There's definitely some things that need working on. I can't stop. I just can't. I, um, I gotta, I gotta get this. That 
helped a little bit. Just I feel like every time I add something, it gets a little bit better. So that's a good thing. Um, espresso. Sorry, I have to come in from this direction. It's a little bit different working on the easel than working on a table. I don't think espresso is the right All right, I think that that's not bad. I'm going to off camera try and assess what it is about her mouth that I'm not happy with. Um, I'm not sure if it's that it still needs a little bit more shading. That was clay rose. Or if it's that there's not enough color there, maybe I need to add some some peat, light peach on top. I just don't know, you guys. I'm sorry. All right, well, <laughs> I should probably sign off now. She's not bad. Um, if I do anything because I can't stand to wait, I'll for sure tell you what it is that I did. I think she's she's mostly she's mostly there. And I think when we get the hair on there, that's gonna make a huge difference. Um, something about her her eyelashes that I'm not happy with. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop because I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna stop. All right, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks for putting up with my craziness. Um, all right. I think once I step away and um, I might add a little bit more pigment down here in her neck. That looks a little bit light in, in uh, pigment, in color, in everything. Just a little bit more. Maybe this peach. I'll add that. Um, and when I come back, we'll work on her hair, and I will probably really like her. Um, I'm just, I'm too close to it, and I've been messing with it for too long. And so um, we'll just see what happens <laughs> um, after we get the hair done. So thanks for being here. Love to you all. Until I see you next time, happy coloring. Bye.